Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. So, so many requests for Star Battle content. I don't take requests, but I like Star Battle, so let's just pretend it's a, some kind of coincidence. It works. Works for me. Right, in this particular game, I'm going to be going with a close-range brawling build with the uh, battle cruiser. I'm looking into investing fairly heavily in laser batteries, but initially, I also pump quite a lot into range. I also grabbed two engine upgrades, which I would honestly recommend for pretty much anyone. At least one, honestly, at least one. Otherwise, you'll end up getting picked off very early on in the game. Also, bear in mind that engines do assist you in farming because you can move faster and you can get to the uh, enemy creeps quicker. Now, why did I take range? Well, initially, uh, the reason for this is that I wanted to get a little bit of an advantage on my fellows right here. I'm actually doing a puppy game here, so you can never quite predict where they're going to go. So, having that bit extra range will apply to your laser cannons as well, and it'll give me a little bit of an edge when nailing them down. However, I did make a mistake with this particular build. What you should do with an opening build, if you're going to get maximum farm initially, is grab four ranks in laser battery. The reason for that is that if you have four ranks, it does enough damage to one-shot the base it creeps so uh, that will help you farm way faster initially and the investment will absolutely pay off in the long run i would highly recommend that you do that now as regards to what our opposing team's got we can have a look at it right here we're sort of pushing our way in and we've got Andil heading over here they're actually farming up here right now. I've got Jingu and Aindil who are just trying to take as many of these phoenixes out as possible to get some early farm i don't really blame them for that honestly because this is a fairly safe place to be early game if you're in a puppy game. Yeah, if you're in a, a ranged team, then your ranged team is going to warp back onto that warp prism and brawl. And if they've actually got the ability to outrun, then they're going to be able to nail them down very nicely indeed. As it stands out, the warp prism doesn't actually do an awful lot of damage. And this is something that I hope does get resolved because you see he's just sitting there eating the warp prism. He doesn't care. Now the warp prism could take a lot of damage, but it can't deal out any punishment. Now in the meantime, we decide to double back and we're going to flank it here. I'm going to get him very very close. Hoag, or whatever his name is, opens up with an initial plasma barrage there, which is quite dangerous early game because the amount of damage it does is lethal. We're looking at 2,100 over three seconds. Admittedly, with unless you're building very early energy, which, as I recall, this guy, uh, no, he's not. He hasn't even touched his energy reserves. Once you fire that off, that's basically it. You done for the fight. There's nothing you can really do there. I mean, that money could be spent on a lot of different things. And he's got two upgrades in his movement speed right there, but nothing else. So he's pretty much entirely reliant on that one plasma barrage, which is about to fire again at this point. We're nailing Lucas down. Lucas is already completely and totally boned. We tear him apart right there. Like I said, that's the risk of getting out of position so early on in the game. It can get you a lot of farm, a huge amount of farm even. But if you don't pull it off then you're going to end up getting absolutely destroyed. And that's exactly what ended up happening right there. Okay. Now, we're just farming around a little bit right here. We're not having too many problems. Plowing our way through into the science vessel. We actually drained it really badly there. <laughs> Unfortunately for Halula, or whatever the hell his name is, Hoog is pushing in right here. And that's a lot of damage coming in. That's going to be very, very dangerous. If he can outrun him, he'll be all right. He's got 1.61. Hugh also has 1.61. He's got our master on him as well. There's an additional warp in Jingu gets on it. So three carriers after Hulula. And it's looking very unlikely he's going to be able to get away from that. Oh, he eats the plasma barrage. No chance. And he melts immediately. So that's one for one right now. If we have a look at the scoreboard, you can see it popping out right here. So Jingu takes a kill right there. You see he's got he's played a lot of games. You can now see how many games your opponents have played by just scrolling down here. Jingu's played 66. He's only got 20 wins out of it, so it's not that amazing. But hey, Aindel is farming like a boss right here. He sees huge numbers. I mean, what, what allows him to do that? We can go and have a little bit of a look right here. So Aindel's actually on number three. You should be able to... Let's nail him down right here. He's gone with the Battle Cruiser build. He, is, he hasn't really gone with anything other than movement speed. He's got nothing else at all. So we're brawling with him right here. I'm trying to nail him down. He's slightly out. No, he's not actually. I did manage to get a upgrade right there. So I'm pounding on him with my laser cannons. I still don't have enough upgrades to really make that massively effective. But with a little bit of a shield upgrade as well as some plating, I managed it to hold up very nicely. aindel has been thrown down on right here. Two battle cruisers pursuing him. Unfortunately, Ball Break has gone for a very tanky build with his ship plating right there. It's very effective as we'll see later on, but I'm not entirely convinced we're going to get Aindel here. I don't think so. It's still going to... There you go! So we did manage to do it. Dived into the tower right there because it doesn't really make too much of a difference. And backing off, Aindel nailed 
the down right there. Ball Breaker takes the kill, which irritated me a little bit, I must say, because I did the majority of the damage there, but hey. Now we're going to back off there. Now, thing is, you see, Hugh's actually burnt through his shields, but the amount of damage he's taking on his armor is minimal. It's pretty pathetic, the amount of damage that can be dished out there. Indeed, one of the uh, good builds that I've seen is actually a bio-regeneration kind of build with the Leviathan. And you go really heavy into armor on that as well, because obviously you don't have to invest in shielding. It's really, really great, and you can minimize the amount of damage you take. Indeed, especially from fighters and small arms, like, say, the particle disruptors. If you have heavy armor, those particle disruptors ain't even going to touch you. We're taking Hugo off right here. Our master moving in as well. It's an absolute furball in the moment. If you can have a look at the amount of kills we've got going on here, I am not doing amazingly well, honestly. My build is not the most effective yet. It does really get going later, as you will clearly see. Limping back to base right here, I did take a fairly significant amount of damage, but nothing to worry about too much. Unfortunately, I was stupid and pick up warp earlier. The thing about warp is that some people argue that you shouldn't take warp initially, because of the amount of time, and indeed farming time, that warp gives you, as well as that incredible tactical advantage of being able to warp in, or indeed warp out of a combat situation, assuming you're not getting shot at, I would highly recommend taking warp in pretty much every build early on. You might sacrifice an upgrade for it, but it will save your ass. Now what I'm also going to take a little bit later on, as you're going to see, is this upgrade. Actually, do I have it? No, I already have it. There we go. Fire, fire suppression. Now this does not appear on here, but the fire suppression system is an amazing upgrade for the battlecruiser. You'll notice that anything that gets to red health will actually start actively losing HP because it goes into a heavily damaged state. The main problem with that is that you can't warp out while being damaged, so you're going to get absolutely pounded on. And you may die before you get back. Indeed, in the previous game, that's what happened. So I took the fire suppression system very early. It does cost 125. As tactically unsound as it might be to invest that much early on, you will notice that getting rid of the possibility of rage is important. I hate the amount of anger and fury I was at because the other guy was such a cocky little twat. He's like, GG, you're dead. It's like, yeah, you're right, but you're a bit of a twat nonetheless, let's be honest. Ball breaker diving in right there. He needs some feedback. Now, feedback is so incredibly powerful right now. And I think that's something that's going to end up getting nerfed in a future version, honestly. It, it drains so much energy and it deals a good amount of damage as well. It completely neutralizes energy builds incredibly fast. And honestly, I would think either it's got to be an ultimate ability or they've got to nerf it. Because really, it's, it's just so incredibly powerful and really useful. As regards the other weapons I've got right now, I've really gone all out into my laser batteries. I'm going for this close-range brawling, and you'll notice that I get some plasma shield upgrades later on. I want to be able to go in there, survive that initial burst, and deal some big damage. Hopefully try and drive them away. Now, you may have noticed some odd movement inconsistencies going on here. The reason is that in the latest build, the author decided to make all of the ships move like the carrier. So you can see the carrier sort of gracefully but slowly turning right there. However, it is possible to exploit it by clicking incredibly close to your ship to sort of turn on a dime. I don't know if that's intentional, but that's the case right now. As you see, Shadow Effects turns very quickly right there to go back on Bazlu. We've got Jingu flying through the middle right there. Jingu's pretty good right now. He's going for an armor build, and that's going to do him very well. He's going to survive for quite some time. Ball Breaker in the middle there, taking an awful lot of hits. Ball Breaker's armor is ridiculous. Lots of, lots of great power going on right there. And you're not going to be able to take him out too much. Our master is getting driven away. Now, as regards to me, I'm just chilling over here farming. There was no point in really getting into that engagement. It was going to be entirely inconclusive. None of our ships were really at risk right there. There's the turn on a dime. I'm still trying to warp out right here, see if I can get in here and save shadow effects. Well, he's not going to die, but I'd like to actually go in there and get some scrap on. That's not happening at the moment, though. I'm going to have to coast my way back there under thrusters simply because I was taking too many hits from the fighters to actually warp out. But I'm getting some good farm on right here. So he be chewing through the fight as I engage Hoog at close range. And he's like, oh, well, I've got to use some energy. Well, it doesn't matter. You've nuked my energy. I have nothing but a warp drive. However, he is pretty quick. Not quick enough, though. Trying to get in range with the laser batteries right here. Still taking fighters. I'm just unloading with missiles right now. It's just not quite enough. So I'm going to turn back right here. Hugh's going to have to stay the hell away from that. If I can get in close, then that'll be really, really great. Going after Baslow now. Baslow is really slow, and this could be his undoing right here. But notice, notice how much armor Baslow's got. We're going to chew through his shields. Now, I want you to watch how much damage he's going to take right here, because the answer to that question is not an awful lot. You see, I'm laying into him with everything I've got, and it's barely touching him. We've got four ships now, five ships, just 
beating on this dude. Now, what I would have expected to happen here is for them to use this guy as a tank and just beat the crap out of us and warp in while we're just trying to beat on him. He's just like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You know, oh, I'm not even at half health yet. I'm just going to leave. I'm getting some farm on right here. I'm killing your fighters. Now Jingo finally warps in, but the question is, what does he have and what can he lock onto? I've taken a bit of punishment right there. I don't have too many upgrades on my shields right now. I want to chase these guys down. I'm not having it. I'm not having it at all. Ball Break has managed to get ahead of Basilo, but the amount of damage he's actually dishing out is not great. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this seemed like some kind of trap, but it wasn't happening. I'd like to also point out the fact that Joshka has been sitting up here in the freaking corner all game doing absolutely nothing. It's incredibly irritating. This is the problem with puppy games. I mean, chased down by Jingo. Jingo unleashes a plasma barrage. It's very powerful, but it's not enough to take me down. And I do have some good regen. I believe I pick up... I, if I haven't already picked up bioregenerative steel, then I get it a little bit later on. Pretty powerful. He can't take me down anyway. This, this is not going to happen. Jingu beating on me, but our master gives him a full broadside right here, driving Jingu away as he slowly tries to flank around. Hugh tit for tat here with ball break and nothing really happening there though and Jingu is being chased off by a cloaked our master right here which is quite a neat way to do things but he hasn't upgraded his particle disruptors all that much he's got quite a bit of range but he doesn't really have the firepower to do anything he's got that electromagnetic storm and now a quick turn on a dime Jingu unleashes with all the fury of that plasma barrage Ball Breaker coming in to back him up right here. Our Master's okay, though. His shields ate the vast majority of that. Ball Breaker chasing him down, but again, just doesn't have the firepower to really chew into Jingu all that much. I'm going to try and get him down to a bleeding state, but it's not going to happen. Okay. Now, I'm buying upgrades at the Wazoo right here. I've gone really heavy into my shields. I want to be able to brawl, and I believe I also have the bioregenerative steel upgrade. It makes health regen on the armor go much faster and at a much greater rate. So even if I do take that damage, I'm going to be able to get right back into the fight really quickly. Our Master Shadow Effect and Ball Breaker sort of farming in the middle right here. Needless to say, the AFK Joshka is just sitting there getting kills. All he has is the Yamato Cannon and really barely any other upgrades to speak of. Incredibly annoying that anyone would even choose to do that. But hey, now you've been named and shamed in front of the internet. Enjoy it. Three brawling in the middle once again. I'm going to head over to the side and get some good farm going on. My farm is getting pretty solid right here. You see, AFK doesn't really get you anywhere. But Shadow Effects ahead of me, Ball Breaker ahead of me as well. We lost Hula, Hula La or whatever the hell his name is earlier. We've taken out two of theirs though, so that's not really a big deal. Jingu is the biggest threat right here. He's obviously experienced, he knows what he's doing. So I need to outfarm that guy and we need to nail him down. You'll notice I haven't really got anything else other than the Yamato Cannon right now. Yamato Cannon, it, like I say, it's pretty dull, but it's a nice ability. It's very quick to fire. It doesn't take a huge amount of energy. The cooldown is barely nothing. And it doesn't have this damage over time effect. It's that one initial burst. 1,500 damage as opposed to that 2,250 over there. And once again, there's the energy drain. This time it actually does affect me because I lost my ability to fire my Yamato cannon. I'm going to back off slightly right here and we'll have a look at the entire field and see what's going on. Three carriers moving in right here. Jingu a threat as far as I'm concerned. Tries to nail down shadow effects. He has the energy as well. He's gone with a pretty heavy energy build and none of our guys actually have anything they can do with it. However, I'm going to try and punish him for that. I'm going to get right in close and I'm going to brawl him with a full broadside. See the amount of damage I'm able to inflict right there. Melting away his shields. Unfortunately, we've now chewed through to the armor and we can do basically nothing to him. The best way to deal with the armor I found is to actually unleash with special weapons. If he's gone really heavy into armor, you see he's just just nothing it's just not being told uh, not getting hit by anything at all right here i eat the plasma barrage once again my shields managed to hold up ball break it in a tit for tat war with him but jingo just doesn't care you need some high damage stuff like yeah i need to either upgrade your missile systems or you need to hit them with some special weapons in order to chew through that Side storm in the middle right there. Three carriers eat it. Our master with a nice shot and now backing off once again. Doesn't have the energy for cloak. Ball breaker eating another plasma barrage. But his armor is so, so heavy and he's got so many hit points. It really doesn't actually matter right now. I'm just going to back off and like I said, this, this game is sort of somewhat inconclusive for the moment. Just look at this guy. Just look at him. I think he might have actually DC'd earlier. I can't really recall. And have a look at this scoreboard and it might actually tell you. Nah, he's still there, so I don't really know if he's DC'd or not. We should have actually got control of him if he had, but hey, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I just, I don't see why you go into a game AFKing all the time, so we'll assume something bad happened, like, you know, he fell down a well, or he was killed by a ravaging tornado. Or a pack of kittens. Feral kittens. Now, what have I picked up? Well, 
Got the Amato Cannon. Got a little bit extra energy to help me out with that. And I'm... Look at this. I, this is just silly. Ten of the Plasma Shield. And I'm going to roll out with this. I've got some good speed as well. I'm actually cruising at 1.81 right now. Which is faster than most of their ships, I believe. Shadow Effects has got a lot of speed, but he doesn't really have the durability to actually eat that. Eat another Plasma Cannon. I'll master the warps in on him right there. Trying to beat on Baslo, but good luck with that. As soon as we get through to his armor, things are going to go horribly wrong. However, he hasn't upgraded his armor, and there he eats a Yamato Cannon. Now he's getting chewed up by my recently upgraded laser batteries. He's getting swarmed on, and he suddenly realizes his armor is not enough. Shadow Effects chewing through him as well. Big damage being done on all fronts. I'm going to stay slightly ahead of him, because again, he's far too slow. He went with this tanky build, forgot to upgrade it. Baslo is dead. There's no question about that. I just stay ahead of him and say, well, you know what? You are absolutely, completely, and totally boned. You could eat Yamato, but that would be a waste. And down he goes. Okay, now we've finally got a break in the action. I think I actually picked up the kill there, so that's pretty good. I ate the feedback. I don't care. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, no, it's a feedback. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go in there and hit you with a massive barrage of laser batteries. He has no armor, and you can tell. I'm chewing through it at incredibly high speed right there. Having to deal with a bunch of Vikings that are coming in at me. Not that they can really break my shields, but hey, there's a little bit of money for it. He's going to go down. Yes, indeed, Hugh, almost so close. Don't want to dive in next to the base, but now we get the opportunity to pick at the science vessel right here. Now I'm going to get him nice and close and unleash a full broadside on him. Jingu tries to defend. What's he going to do? Not an awful lot. He turns around realizing that he's going to lose that. He's going to need the rest of his guys over there, but they're not repaired quick enough. Hugh is going to take ages to fix up, and right now we're just annihilating that science vessel. Once the science vessel goes down, folks, the range and damage on this goes down as well. You see he lost an upgrade right there, and... Our fighters get huge upgrades, which make things an awful lot easier. Hugh actually GG's right there, but we're still going to carry on fighting. The rest of them didn't quite give up. I've seen some amazing turnarounds in this game, ladies and gentlemen. It can be done. There's no doubt about that. Jingu goes in for it, locks on our master. Our master's the primary target. Shield's got to look at that. Look at how much damage he does, but suddenly disappearing. Nicely done right there. It's a good, good, good pick for the cloak. Honestly, cloak is such a great ability just to escape as well as do some ambushing attacks. Jingu uh, goes in for a broadside war with me. Not a particularly wise idea, as his shields have found out. Quick turnaround from shadow effects, but he doesn't really have the damage to lay into him. Strike cannons not available. Actually, they are, and he didn't really do anything to him. I don't know why he just didn't unleash with the strike cannons, but I suppose it would have been a little bit of a waste of energy. Now, I'm cutting Hugh around here. He's pushing his way through, and he's eating massive amounts of damage that I eat the feedback. I'm taking some big damage, but I think I can do it, except Jingu warps in on him. So I'm going to have to get the hell out of there. Now, let's check the jo Oh my god, Joska's actually moving! <laughs> really slowly! I is he a player or is he a bot? We just don't know. Uh, right, now. I have 773 minerals, I think. Is that the case? I think it is, yes. This is going to be fun. Now, what do you think I'm going to buy with 773 minerals, ladies and gentlemen? We will find out. Oh, yes. It's going to be tasty. I can tell you that for a fact. Okay, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. Wacky, waving, inflatable, arm-waving nuclear missile. I suppose that works. Okay, we need some energy right there because I eat that feedback. I don't want that to prevent me from doing so. So I'm going to grab some energy. Your energy doesn't really regen all that fast within range of the mothership. So I'm going to have to rely on my reactors for that. Once again, our master and ball breaker pushing forward. The other team is in a very, very bad state at the moment. You see that all three of them currently sitting at the base waiting for their doom. Are they actually going to come out and try and take us on? We will find out. Glorious last stand is required for our opponents right here. The question is, are we going to get it from them? Hugh and Jingu rolling out, and that destroyer just sort of chilling out. I think their crew are just at the bar waiting for their inevitable demise. Oh dear, Hugh runs into the middle of that. You know what that means, kids? Nuclear missile, close range. Oh look, your ship just exploded. Ah, it's wondrous stuff. I think I might have even done some splash damage right there. So we're taking out the science vessel. Hugh gets mown down so incredibly fast. Jingu's sitting there bombarding our carrier. Not like our carrier really cares. He's like, hey, you know what? I've got plenty of shields and armor. I'm just there. <laughs> you haven't even taken my shields down to half. It's all good. 
And we're going to plow in here for the final barrage. Jingu is going to get scissored in between us right here. Eats a Psy Storm. The <laughs> frame rate is getting ruined. There's so many explosions and so many lasers going off right here. Shadow Effect even shields up to make sure he doesn't take anything. Jingu just knows he can't do anything. Laying into him at close range here. He's eating the full fury of my level 12 laser cannons. And a Yamato cannon whenever I have one spare. There you go. Your fancy armor doesn't make any difference whatsoever against those special abilities. Feedback just to make sure you ain't going anywhere. And you, sir, are very, very, very dead. Oh, yeah. The frame rate, the explosions. It's so beautiful, but so taxing on the computer, I tell you that. And there's the last one, folks. And that is our victory sorted out right there. And yes, what about Battle Cruiser still sitting up in the corner doing absolutely nothing? Close range brawler, battle cruiser build right there. Not entirely optimal, but it seems to do the job. And the win goes to us. And no doubt I'll post some more star battle content in the future. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.